you rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. When the Son of Humanity comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the sovereign will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by God, take your inheritance, the dominion prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. May God add understanding to this reading of the gospel. Let's be seated. God, I come before you just as Francis, a person who wants to be of service, a person wanting to be someone to honor you and lift up your holy and precious name. Anoint the ears of those who would hear a message today that it be your message for them on their faith journey. Amen. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal. The wild asses quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle, the plants for people to use, to bring forth food from the earth, and wine to gladden the heart, human heart, oil to make the face shine, and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them the birds build their nests, the stork has its home in the fir trees. The mountains are for the wild goats. The rocks are a refuge for the conies. You have made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's time for setting. You make darkness, and it is night. When all the animals of the forest come creeping out, the young lions roar for, roar for their prey seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. People go out to work, to their labor, until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea great and wide, creeping things innumerable are there, living things, both small and great. Sounds like a beautiful poem. It's Psalm 104, if you ever want to look it up. Who is Francis? The one that we on that I honor every year. You'll notice when I'm not wearing the owl and I have a little brown cross on my shirt. That's actually called a Tau cross. And some people look at me like I'm strange because it looks like I'm wearing a crooked T. That's actually the exact same design of the habit that the Franciscans wore and still wear to this day. And that's why I wear that. <coughs> Francis was actually a young man with great wealth. His father was a person who sold linens and cloth. Francis was a man who had great dreams of being a strong conqueror and a leader, being seen as a great one. 
Francis joined many wars, went off to battle, so that he could someday claim his rightful place. And then Francis was arrested, put away in prison, and became very ill. During that time, Francis had an epiphany that he had to be different, he had to change. He went home, disavowed all of his riches, his family, and went off into the woods to pray. Saying has it that he went to one little church and he heard the voice of God saying, Francis, rebuild my church. And it was a dilapidated old building that had been abandoned. So Francis busied himself rebuilding that church and making it a beautiful place of sanctuary. And that very church became the movement of the poor Clares, the sisters who wanted to follow him. Francis, still being unsettled, knew that there was something more that he needed to do. And he heard the voice again call to him, Francis, rebuild my church. And he realized that the church was not that one little bitty building, but was the earth, was all, was all creation. Francis accepted the fact that he was the lesser of creation. Francis accepted the fact that he was to be a minor person in all of this. We not only remember on this day the greatness and the love of all of our animals and our pets, but those still with us and those already on the other side of the Great Rainbow Bridge, we come to celebrate today all of God's creation. We come together to share in all the bounty which a loving and magnificent God has given to all of us. We also come together to be reminded of the great trust that God has bestowed upon each of us to honor and respect the vast creation and all of the innumerable creatures upon the earth. We all have heard the benefits of domestic animals. Studies show that a pet can lower a person's blood pressure, can extend the life of the owner. Some studies show that a trained dog can be a source of comfort for children in a courtroom. Some can detect tumors and cancers within a human body. Some are now used in funeral homes to bring down the stress level of families facing the most difficult time that they may have ever experienced. But I wonder sometimes if it is the animal that really does all of this on their own, or perhaps, is it the fact that we as humans are accepting the gift of the spirit within that animal? All animals have a spirit. We just don't recognize it. That little yellow canary that sits on our bird bath in the backyard is a free spirit. The doves that fly around and act crazy in our yard, they're free spirits. <clears throat> Could you imagine if we lived life like that? Oh, there's a bowl that looks like a sunflower filled with water. I want to go stomp my feet in it. And you did. The free spirit. Perhaps it is also our own strength coming through because we are accepting the responsibility of caring for just one portion of God's creation. We need to daily remind ourselves that of the world is God, that all of the world is God's creation. We need to nurture, love, and care for this precious gift given freely for us. From the reading this morning from Genesis 1:26, God said, let us make humans in our image, in our likeness, 
And let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock and all of the earth, and over all the cre creatures that move along the ground. This scripture tells us without a doubt that we are made in God's image and God's likeness. We are made to care for all the creation that God found important enough to create for us. They were created for our pleasure, just as we were created for God's pleasure. They were created to be cared for and to love, just as God cares for and loves us. On this Feast of Francis, we could have a long discussion and debate over climate change, the bad natural disasters happening around the world and here at home. I think if we just could accept the responsibility that God bestowed upon us as a creation in God's likeness, we would simply just be taking better care of what is ours. Then the world would have a chance to heal itself. The earth is like the firstborn child, not the last. When a parent has their first child, I know this is true because I'm number seven of eight. When they have their first child, there's so much tenderness and compassion and gentleness. You've seen the commercial where the woman packs just enough crackers in a baggie and seals it up. Won't let anybody touch her baby until they cleanse their hands with, with soap and water and sanitation. They cherish that child and nurture it and strengthen it and let it be nurtured and loved. They want no one to bring any harm to that firstborn child. By the time the seventh child gets here, Oh, good Lord, they ain't playing the traffic. They won't hit him. <laughs> oh, who needs another picture of a kid? For Christ's sake, let it go. Yeah, we bought those toys for Dennis when he was a baby. We don't need them again. Earth is our first child. We've got to nurture it. We've got to care for it. We have to respect it. There are other, I believe, other children that are God's creation that are planets. We've spent hundreds of millions of dollars trying to look at Saturn. That just blew up last week. The satellite that was beaming down pictures for us. That's gone. What we have is our firstborn, our Mother Earth. We have to start caring for it. That doesn't mean go out and buy 15 recycling bins and put your plastics in one and your paper in another and your cardboard in another. If that's your thing, praise God, I'm glad to do it. But you know, it may be something as simple as when we pulled in the parking lot this morning, there was a cup thrown out here in our garden. Roy just picked it up. That's showing the tenderness for Earth to just pick up, to take responsibility for what's there. If we don't like what the Earth is becoming or what the Earth is doing, then let's be a part of changing. Let's have that same free spirit that those animals have. You know, when you get that goofy little dog from the dog shelter who just comes over and comes flying at you and just kind of lands on top of you and licks you in the face. Sometimes when you're outside and you look at a stranger, just walk up to him and maybe give him a hug. Or just walk up to them and maybe shake their hand or smile. One thing we've experienced going over to St. Paul's for the past couple of months for their communal meals for the homeless and those in need, 
Some of them may be walking up and down that hall acting crazy. Not once did we say hello to somebody that they didn't stop their craziness and say hello back. That's part of taking care of your earth too. Just as we accept the fact that life is a very precious thing to be cared for, let us also accept the fact that the earth and all of creation deserves that same attention. We ask, O oh God, that you give us the mind and the heart of wise stewards to care for all of your creation as you have given each to us. Let us be the person to help bring peace and healing to our precious Mother Earth. Let us be your instrument to make all these things possible. In your holy and precious name we pray.